In this uh, study that I was describing, where we brought in women with menstrual cramps, we asked all the participants to not use any kind of hormonal medications during the mm. trial, sure. because that would be a confounder. And so that included birth control pills. Um, if they were sexually active, we said, please use some kind of contraception other than birth control pills, because those hormones will goof up our study. One of the women said, don't worry about me. My husband and I haven't used any kind of contraception for years because um, she said, I, I'm infertile. I, I don't ovulate. Um, the second month of the, of the study, when she'd been on the vegan diet for two months, she came in to our center and she said, I got good news and I got bad news. I said, what is it? She said, I've got to drop out of your study because I'm pregnant. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so, oh my gosh, I um, love that story. The, the, the point being, this is a true story. Um, the, the point being, she had um, changed her diet, her hormones got into better balance, um, and this whole idea of I'm infertile, there's nothing I can do. And, and you know what this is like. Uh, people spend huge amounts of money. Oh my gosh. That's and they, they get all kinds of treatments and they're monitoring themselves and they're turning natural reproduction into this sterile oh exercise. Um, anyway, I, I, about eight years later, I was lecturing in a different city and she came to my lecture with her three kids. And um, it's, it's astounding to think what can happen. Um, I, I, I've also told the story about Catherine Lawrence, who you may know. Catherine Lawrence is one of our Food for Life instructors. And Catherine Lawrence uh, first walked into this because she was an aerospace engineer. And she was in Iraq. And she came back to the U.S. And when she got back, her friends basically said, what foods did you miss while you were in Iraq? Over in Iraq, you don't get any of your normal favorites. And she said, you know what I miss? I miss cheese. Macaroni and cheese and so on. She tucked into cheese like crazy cheese snacks, those mac and cheese dinners. Um, she gained weight, but she also started to develop um, pain in her abdomen, especially with her cycle. And it got worse and worse and worse and worse. The doctor did a laparoscopy, which is you look into the abdomen through a little hole. And so the doctor made a little slit in her abdomen and looked around and he um, sewed her up, sent her to the recovery room and wrote down in the chart endometriosis. Endometriosis is a condition where the cells that line the uterus have sneaked out and they're implanting all around your abdomen and they swell up and they hurt. And they also will strangle the fallopian tube so you get infer infertility as a result. And this is what she had. And so the doctor tried various hormonal treatments and painkillers, but nothing was working for her. And she was getting worse and worse. She decided, okay, even though she and her husband hadn't started their family yet, Oh, she gosh. yes, she was going to have a hysterectomy. Oh my god! So yes, yeah, so they they scheduled the hysterectomy. Oh and my god! I mean, if you just take out all the organs, they don't hurt anymore. Oh my um, that, gosh! Well, but but something happened. A friend of her said, "Wait, wait, try a diet change," because we know this from breast cancer that that breast cancer patients change their diets to tackle their hormones, and it can help. She thought, "What have I got to lose?" She went on a completely low fat, vegan, no no animal products diet. And she started to lose weight and her energy got better, but also her pain started to diminish. And it went down and down and down and down and down. And so the, her doctor did another laparoscopy, brought her into the operating room, made a little incision, started looking around her abdomen and looking around and looking around. And then he sewed her up and sent her into the recovery room. And the doctor went out to the waiting room and said to her husband, this is amazing. Her, her endometriosis is effectively gone. And her husband said, I'm not surprised. You know, we, she went completely vegan, low fat, really totally healthy. And she's felt dramatically better ever since. And the doctor said, no, 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 no. Foods don't cause endometriosis. And there is no way that a diet change could make it go away. The only possible explanation here is this is a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love anyway. it when someone of science yeah, says, I don't have the science, so I'll call it a miracle. Can you believe it? Anyway, yeah. um, Catherine has three kids now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, she never had the procedure. Her endometri endometriosis went away. She's got three kids. And she um, joined us to be one of our Food for Life instructors. But but my point is, here's, here's my point. Yes, you could change your diet to be kind to animals. That's a really good thing. To, uh, to help the earth, that's a great thing. Uh, to reduce your weight or to prevent heart attacks or th these kinds of things. That's all great. But if just from day to day, you just don't feel good. You can't do anything. Um, yes. Th now is the time 
to use all these diet changes that nobody ever talked about before. Um, this is going beyond cutting your cholesterol and that kind of thing. It's tackling those hormones that are affecting everything from your pain to how you feel, to your fertility, to your moods, your thyroid function. All of these things are part of this spider's web of hormones where you pull on one strand, it affects everything else. And I wanna show you in, the, in your body in balance how to choose the foods to get back to the life that you want.